Hi, I'm Baldo Bonimon, and this is the Conducting Coaching Podcast, where we talk about conducting from the inside. Hey, maestras and maestros, it's Baldo here, and today we'll talk about something I had many conversations about. People like Nando Castelló from Spain, Paula Benke, Andres Jaime, and many others have asked me about age limits. What they should do because they're at a certain age and they felt like many doors are already closed or they're not eligible for some opportunities anymore. I understand that because it's true that certain courses or assistant jobs, for example, are just for people under 35 or sometimes even for people under 30. The music business will expect you to have made certain steps at a certain age. So then the question comes up, are you too old to become a conductor? The simple answer is no. Long answer is, it will depend on your goals and where you are in your career. So let's have a closer look. The fact is that some people just simply get to conducting later. Maybe you have a career as a musician first or a composer and you pick up a baton at a certain age. Or maybe you started a long time ago and you're still waiting for the right opportunities and for whatever reason just can't make the next steps in your conducting career. It might also be that you do already do a bit of conducting and you think you want to make this your main focus, but you have no idea how. Now, I won't lie to you and will say that no major agent or big international orchestra or opera house will ring you up out of the blue if you are 40 or 50 years old and have no international profile, no recognizable project or have maybe never conducted a professional orchestra before. But there are certain options that you absolutely have. There is a career development possible at any age, really. It depends on your mindset, your situation, and on a clear analysis of yourselves and your goals. Now, you'll have to start with asking yourselves a few fundamental questions. And these questions are all about defining what a successful conducting career means to you. First question here would be to ask yourselves if you want to make a living from conducting and what a living exactly means for you. There are many ways of making a good living and sometimes a very good living from conducting and you don't have to be Riccardo Muti. There are academic jobs, theatres, churches, community ensembles and there are also many different types of career options on the professional circuit either on a national or international level. But answering that question will help you to make the right decisions later on. And if you have to make tough choices like quitting a job or changing something fundamental in your lives, at least you know exactly why you do it. The second is maybe the most important question. It is is about your satisfaction. What is going to make you happy? Professional satisfaction can mean many things. It might be that you just have a dream to express yourself as an artist. You want to learn new skills maybe and have new experiences or you uh, want to conduct certain pieces that you feel very strongly about or that you want, want to work with a great orchestra or a certain quality of musicians. Maybe you want to work in a supportive environment and leaving, uh, leaving a lasting trace or you simply want recognition and a bigger income. These are all valid, valid thoughts But when we talk about happiness, don't forget to think about your work-life balance, especially at a certain age. How do you imagine conducting uh, fitting into your life? Here it's very important to understand that career goals are not simply dreams without consequences. They involve a reality and they come at a certain price. An international career can mean years of insecure income, relocations, sometimes impossible work-life balance, and so on. Do you want that in your age? These are things that you can just answer by yourselves. And in different moments in your life, you will have maybe different priorities. But you'll always have to accept that every goal comes with a certain price tag. And if you want to avoid frustration, you have to accept the positive and the negative aspects of the decisions you make. Then the next step would be to set yourself some achievable medium and long-term goals. Now, when you're thinking about your career goals at this point, I would check two things first. 
Check if your goals are not simply the same goals you had when you were 20 years old and you never revised them. When you're a bit older, it's usually easier to put things into perspective. Your life changes and it's important to constantly revise what you're actually aiming for. Then also make sure that your goals are really your own. I had conversations with many conductors who all want to do the same thing. They all want to work with great orchestras and conduct always the same repertoire. Mahler, Bruckner, Brahms and all the things that are traditionally associated with a conducting career. Now, what I can see in the music business is that there are many musicians and many conductors and composers around who are just frustrated and unhappy because they set themselves either unrealistic goals or goals that are not their own. It's just what they see all the times in other people and they think this is the only way to have a successful conducting career. And this happens not just to people over 35, but to everyone. And I tell you, there are other options. Don't just copy what everybody else does. A more realistic strategy might be, for example, to look at a portfolio career, combining various activities. Say you're a teacher at a university and you want to combine your teaching work with some professional conducting, but you still want the advantage of having a steady base, to have a routine, be able to have a life, have a work-life balance and so on. If you have talent as a conductor, good technical foundations and a bit of network, this will be an achievable medium or long-term goal. Another realistic goal might be, say, you're a composer that wants to conduct too. So you might start with your own pieces where people will value your help and if you have talent and accumulated some experience, you start to branch out to other people's music. But again, there will be a price and maybe you don't have as much time to compose anymore. You just have to be clear about that. Now let's go a step further and look at where you are, what your strengths and your weaknesses are. As we said, it's pretty unlikely that a major agency would sign you up at 50 if you have no recognizable name and no immediate business prospects. It's not totally impossible, but you would have to have at least a recognizable name in another musical field an instrumentalist, a soloist, for example, or as a a composer, or a project that has a place in the music industry, like an own orchestra or a social project and so on. If you're at a certain age, an agency just wouldn't think the work to build your name from scratch would make business sense to them. Some smaller agencies or local agencies might sign you up, but there you would have to ask yourselves if they can really help you much. The short answer to the whole agent question is that if you're at a certain age, most likely you will have to do some of an agent's work by yourselves. You remember in episode two, when I talked to Leila, she talked about the need to build a profile and the narrative just to make you stand out from the crowd. And this need is there, never mind if you have an agent or not. You have to find out what you are about as an artist. So from the analysis of your strengths, you will learn what your potential profile could be and what sets you apart from other conductors. When you do this analysis for yourselves, it's also great to get some professional help from people who know about conducting careers and who can look at your profile and analyze your situation together with you. Because sometimes they have a clearer view of who you are, just seeing you from the outside and looking at the options that are there in your specific situation. A strength and weakness analysis could look something like that. I'll just make a small example, maybe. Say, you're 41 years old and a violin player in a professional orchestra. You're recognized in the wider violin scene and in your orchestra, but you're not a celebrity. And you want to switch to conducting to possibly hang up the violin in a few years. So maybe your strengths would be, you know the dynamics of a professional orchestra, You know the psychology of the players and what people need in order to give great concerts. You've maybe worked with some top class conductors and seen how they get the best out of an orchestra. And you know how to talk to musicians and have all the practical knowledge of how to put great performances together. Your weaknesses might be you have hardly any conducting experience. Maybe you have no technique and you have no idea about the whole conducting world. And nobody outside of your professional circle knows who you are. So the way to achieve your 
conducting medium long-term goal would be to build on your strengths and at the same time work on your weaknesses. For example, to get conducting experience where you can use your skills. Conducting a school orchestra or a string ensemble who will value your violinistic insights while taking conducting lessons to work on your technique. Then using your professional circle and the people who appreciate your experience as a musician with small gigs that nobody wants to book an expensive conductor for. Preparation rehearsals maybe or chamber concerts and so on. And when that goes well, it's time to maybe present your first idea for a, co- for a family concert to a general manager, you know. If they trust you, you conduct it and put some money into a good video recording. Get testimonials and references from managers and fellow musicians. Put it all on a website and start communicating your new life as a conductor. It will still take time, but if you have the talent and put the work in, this is a possible career path. Now, this is just one possible scenario, and there are endless others. Maybe you already have a limited conducting career, but you want to work internationally. Or you conduct choirs and want to break into the orchestral world. These are all plausible scenarios for conductors over 30. Now, if any of you are in a situation where you don't know how to get on, I would recommend you start with this process, asking yourselves the basic questions, analyzing strengths and weaknesses, and setting achievable mid- and long-term goals. Because next week, we do the second half of this process. We look at the steps you can take in your age to achieve your conducting goals, the doors that you have still open, the opportunities that are still there. One thing I would say straight away though, stop thinking about things you can't influence. Don't spend even a second regretting lost opportunities or closed doors. Better spend that time and energy on something that is really worthwhile and that you can influence, like the avenues you have. Not thinking about things you can't influence, I think is generally important if you want to be a conductor. You'll always get people who like you or don't like you, people who help or hold you back. Give them all a smile, get out of your armchair and get to work, because if you're a conductor, you're on a mission. If you're a bit older, you're hopefully also a bit smarter, don't forget that. So no looking back and on to the next thing. Let's speak again next week and look at the doors that are still open for all you conductors over 35. Thanks for listening. To send us your comments or suggestions, please write us a message on Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter to stay up to date with all the conducting coaching news and events.